Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. Today I'm reviewing a popular brand, Zeppelin, which is uh, one of the brands of the Point Tech company in Germany. Uh, you will also find uh, Junkers uh, in the, their lineup. And Junkers and Zeppelin share many, many parts and really only differ uh, by their dials. This is a 40 millimeter watch, as you can see, it wears very comfortably on my rather thin wrists and the lugs are rounded and angled down so it really is a nice fit the watch comes on a quality blue leather strap that matches that gorgeous sunburst blue dial you have a deploying clasp but it's a bit on the cheap side kind of digs into your wrist and uh, adds unwanted thickness especially when you work at the office so you could do without it and replace it with a regular clasp especially since there is no particular signing and uh, it is kind of a cheap type of uh, butterfly clasp also you're not going to wear this watch to play tennis so there's not much need for something of, uh, of this nature on a, on a dress dressier piece Although you could wear this piece with jeans, it looks fine as well. I love to wear, the, wear it with a light blue suit at the office. I think it looks smashing. So it's a mid, mid, mid price uh, kind of watch, around the 500 US dollar range, the 450 euro range. And it's uh, available everywhere on, on eBay, for example. And um, yeah, if you have a Junkers, it will be the uh, similar similar watch Junkers probably a bit more simple usually uh, white or off-white dials and usually more into the Bauhaus uh, style and you can find uh, elements of that style here as well very thin hour minute seconds hands and uh, very thin hour markers now let's look at the dial Everything is very well balanced. You have three complications here. The date at four o'clock. At one o'clock, you have the power reserve. And at seven o'clock, you have a slightly useless 24 hour dial, but you can't set it to, a, it is not a GMT function, so you can't set it to a different time. It's just uh, useful to tell if you're in the morning or in the afternoon. I like that there is this little triangle between the crown and the date wheel. The date wheel sometimes appears slightly silverish. It's a, it's a nice detail. And the font used is a bit more rounded. And uh, I think it's the same used on the chapter ring. Chapter ring ring is a bit darker than the dial itself. It seems to be slightly sunken in. Maybe it's an effect of the domed not sapphire uh, it's a mineral crystal a bit like vintage watches there's a slight vintage feel to the watch so at the one o'clock you have this uh, power reserve with a pretty cool golden um, needle here which you find as well on the other complication here 45 hours of uh, reserve it takes about 15 turns of the crown to get up there at nine o'clock, you have the Zeppelin brand, which kind of serves as the nine o'clock hour marker. That's pretty neat. There's no other mention, no other writing on the on the dial apart from the down and up here on the power reserve. And uh, since 1898 date mentioned here, I don't know what uh, this refers to. Probably uh, Zeppelin or something because uh, the watch company itself was uh, built in the 80s I believe 87 I think the crown is a bit on the cheap side a bit unprecise kind of hard to to turn when you wind the watch first position you can change the date again it's a bit uh, it's a bit weird feeling uh, kind of soft and unprecise and on the second position you can stop the seconds and set the time 
We can set the time quite precisely because the minute's hand is very long and thin and so is the second's hand. Pushing it back in and the sweep, which is very smooth, starts again. Its uh, movement is uh, Citizen Miyota 9132, which beats at 28,800 beats per hour, which is quite nice, and especially if you have a very thin, long seconds hand. Notice at the center, this is not gold, this is silver. So it contrasts, contrasts with the gold of the two complications here. You can admire the sweep here. Very nice, it's good to have uh, eight ticks per second. So this movement, you can sit in the back here. A bit of decoration. Now one issue with the, the watch that everybody will, uh, will notice is the noise of this movement. If you're in a quiet environment at the office or at home, I don't know if you can hear it, I'll put it next to the microphone. The watch kind of sounds like a tambourine. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit annoying. It does sound uh, very cheap, especially since the watch is very light. It's 70 grams altogether, so it's really a weightless kind of kind of watch. And uh, apart from this uh, cheap noise, it's a very, very lovely watch with lovely rounded case here. I guess it's. It kind of reminds me uh, of the of a Zeppelin indeed. I suppose that's where the styling cue was taken from. And uh, the shape is nicely, uh, nicely goes on when you get to the bezel and the domed crystal here. So it is, it is a lovely, lovely profiling uh, that you will enjoy taking in when you have the watch The watch is resistant to uh, 50 meters, so just a bit of, uh, of a splashing. And one more thing to mention about this uh, movement, it only winds in one direction. So if you're not used to uh, watches, automatic watches, you might wonder what this is about. If I flick the watch, there you go. If the rotor goes into the other direction, the non-winding direction, it just goes uh, haywire it will start spinning out of control because nothing is there to stop it. It's a fairly thin rotor, so it does not, you don't feel the wobble all that much as you sometimes might feel with the uh, Valjoux 7750. But it's nonetheless a bit, a bit bizarre when you have it on your hand and uh, just give it a little flick and uh, feel this little wobble and hear this uh, kind of cheap, nasty sound. So overall, you get a beautiful, beautiful watch. I think that's the point uh, of the brand is to bringing uh, quality German, German manufacture at an affo affordable point. And that's why you have this, uh, this uh, Japanese movement uh, in the watch. So let me know what you think of the watch in the, in the comments. Personally, if I had uh, to spend 500 euro now maybe i wouldn't go for this watch now that i have all the watches in my collections that i can compare this watch to it's quite interesting for me to do this review now because i've had it for six months it was this was my first uh, automatic watch and uh, i bought it after going to my sister's house she had one of these she had uh, bought it for her husband but he never wore it wore it i offered to purchase it back from her she refused, so I ended up buying the same watch. It's a pretty cool watch for a first purchase. You won't regret it, but I think that uh, the noise of the of the movement, this uh, tambourine noise, uh, could make you feel like you have something a bit cheap on your, your wrist and uh, long for something of, of better quality. Uh, you will note that the uh, Seiko 6R15 movement, which you find in a uh, watches in this price point. For example, the uh, cocktail watch is uh, almost noiseless, uh, but you don't have the nice sweep of the second hand like you have here. And uh, you probably won't have the power reserve, although some models 
do have do have the power reserve in the Seiko range as well. I prefer this to the cocktail uh, time, as it's been dubbed. Uh, the the watch from uh, Seiko. I think uh, this dial works better for me. It's a bit more discreet. So it's a decent decent watch, a good watch to consider uh, at the five hundred uh, dollar price point. If you can find it uh, below four hundred, it's uh, it's uh, it's a good purchase, but it's not uh, without faults. So there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you will like the the video and uh, subscribe for for more. All right, bye bye, guys.